Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our May 2021 uh, community breakfast. Um, uh, my name is Karen King. I am in community affairs for the Office of New Haven Affairs here at Yale. Uh, our office hosts these breakfasts on the first Thursday of the month from September to May. So this is our last uh, breakfast uh, for the academic year. Uh, we hope that you will, um, if you haven't already, make sure you're on our mailing list, our emailing list, so that you can uh, be informed of when we kick off our events again in September. Um, I have a few announcements before we get started. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, uh, I am with the Office of New Haven Affairs. This is a, a great website to check out on the regular on a regular basis. We have uh, we provide updates, community updates. Um, as, well, as well as opportunities for um, New Haven Public School students to participate in events um, in STEM and the arts and humanities through the Yale Pathways program that is hosted through our office. The, pro the Pathways program um, provides hundreds of workshop opportunities and classes throughout the year for thousands of New Haven Public School students for free. An example of that is um, and actually in a, uh, a Zoom event that comes that's coming up tonight called the New Science of Birdsong. Um, it starts up at six o'clock. It's open to students in grades six through eight. Um, I will put this link in the description uh, in the chat so that you can share this with um, young people in your families uh, and neighborhoods. Um, our Yale affinity groups regularly host um, events throughout the year. That will continue. The university may be wrapping up classes, but the affinity groups are um, one of the many groups that are, continue to offer uh, free events for um, the community. Um, up uh, on May 11th, there's a Tai Chi avatar workout uh, by um, Shirley Chak, who was a member of the of the Yale team, and then she went on to open up her own Tai Chi um, center. So she uh, is going to be um, offering a Tai Chi workout. This is hosted by the Future Leaders of Yale Affinity Group, as well as the Asian Network at Yale and the Yale Latino Networking uh, Group here at Yale. Um, the Yale African American Affinity Group is also hosting a family read aloud. This will take place on Friday, May 14th at 6 p.m. This is open to the public. And the first 10 people to sign up will receive a free children's book. I'll put this link in the description as well. I also encourage you throughout the summer, throughout the year, to um, check out the Yale News website. It is at news.yale.edu. I will put this link in the description as well um, so that you can stay in touch with um, Yale events, uh, Yale um, announcements, um, and uh, other newsworthy items that are posted in abundance every day on the site. So it's worth a daily checkout. So to, uh, this morning, we have the Yale New Haven Hiring Initiative. We have three wonderful speakers with us today. These make up the Yale New Haven Hiring Initiative team. Uh, with us is Chris Brown. He's the director of the Yale University New Haven Community Hiring Initiative. In this role, Chris oversees Yale's efforts to expand local hiring and is responsible for Yale's commitment to bring over 1,000 New Haven residents, uh, hiring over 1,000 New Haven residents. Uh, Chris joined Yale in 2008 and has provided human resources support to Yale College and Yale's museums and galleries. Chris has also led new employee orientation, onboarding new staff members hired throughout the university, and has taught the popular Inside Out Coaching Program, which is part of the Managing at Yale curriculum. Chris is active in community outreach, serving as a board member of the United Way of Greater New Haven and the Workforce Alliance. Chris and his team work closely with New Haven Promise to provide summer internships for New Haven Promise scholars and departments throughout the university. Before Yale, Chris held significant human resources positions in major retail companies such as Williams Sonoma, Saks Fifth Avenue, and The Gap. Chris graduated from uh, Wesleyan with a degree in American Studies. Also joining us is Fallon Thomas, who's the community liaison for the New Haven Hiring Initiative. Uh, Fallon is a New Haven resident who grew up in the West Rock and Dixwell neighborhoods and a graduate of James Hill House High School, and she, where I also graduated, which is why I'm so happy to say that. Uh, she received her bachelor's degree in history from Temple University and a master's in American history with a concentration in the African American experience from Loyola University. Fallon's, Fallon is involved in civic organizations such as the New Haven Club of the National Association of Negro and Professional Women, where she is the vice president. 
She's a dedicated mentor with Phenomenal I Am Inc. and a board member for the Boys and Girls Club of New Haven, where she serves as the governance chair. Fallon builds a shared vision for a strong university and New Haven partnership through her many volunteer roles. She has co-chaired Yale's African-American Affinity Group, which promotes the professional, social, and cultural development of Yale staff. She currently serves as co-chairs of YAAA's Social Justice Committee. She has also served as co-chair of Yale's annual New Haven Multicultural Block Party and, then, and led multiple departmental United Way campaign events. Fallon has been employed with Yale University for over five years and has over 12 years of collegiate administration experience. And Philip Relic is joining us. Um, he joined the Yale New Haven Hiring Initiative in January 2020. Prior to Yale, he helped New Haven residents find employment as a job coach at New Haven Works. As a program manager, Philip ensures smooth implementation of training programs. He manages New Haven Hiring Initiative data and designs new reporting tools. He collaborates with the team in establishing short and long-term goals. Through a data-driven approach, he supports the initiative by implementing efficient sourcing and recruitment strategies, expanding the applicant pool, and improving candidates' experience. So please welcome uh, Chris Brown. Thanks, Karen, and good morning, everyone. We're just so excited to be here. You know, you can see the team got dressed. I even put on dress shoes today. I'm so excited. Before we kick off this morning, we're gonna share some information about our New Haven Hiring Initiative and give you an update. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to remember David Swenson, who is our Chief Investment Officer. He just passed away last night. We just got the news this morning. And, you know, I, I knew him from going to Yale basketball games. So, uh, you know, he, he's an important member of our Yale community and family. And, you know, we, we give his family our, our thoughts and prayers today um, with his passing. So today, you know, our agenda really is very simple. We want to share some information with you about our New Haven Hiring Initiative. We'll tell you about our team. We'll tell you about our strategy. We'll talk about the Yale hiring process in our community outreach and our partner New Haven Works and probably most importantly, how to engage uh, with us. You know, today is really a recruitment event. You know, we're recruiting you actually to help us to share this information with your personal and professional networks so that we can identify and hire Yale residents. So in regards to our team, you heard our bios already, so I won't go through that again, but I'll show you what our org structure looks like. So we're part of HR uh, and we are in the uh, ODI group, which is the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, headed up by Debbie Stanley McCauley, who's our Associate Vice President of Employee Engagement and Workplace Culture, and also a New Hallville resident. Uh, like you heard, you met Philip Relic, and you'll hear from him this morning. And also Fallon Thomas, uh, who is our community liaison. Just a quick history of our hiring initiatives. So back in 2012, after the uh, elections, you know, there was such high unemployment from you know, the economic downturn of 2009, 2010. Actually, New Haven, I believe, led the nation in unemployment. And at that time, the pillars of the city, so the city of New Haven, the Alders, Yale, uh, Yale New Haven Health, uh, uh, our unions, uh, all got together to talk about this un unemployment issue. And out of that the discussion, Evolved New Haven Works, and we'll talk more about New Haven Works uh, this morning. You know, as they are a primary partner of ours. But at the same time, the university created our department, the New Haven Hiring Initiative, and we were created to work as a liaison to New Haven Works uh, and our staffing department, so that we can help coordinate that that effort to hire New Haven residents. At the time, we were the only organization to, you know, create a group within a, an organization to help facilitate this hiring. So I think that helped us to be the primary partner of New Haven Works, but also 
one of the leading employers of, of New Haven Works members. So just looking at the numbers, you know, back in 2015, like Karen said, you know, we, we made an agreement to hire a thousand residents and 500 from our neighborhoods. Uh, focus. And we've been working on that and we'll still need your help with some of that today. And I'll, I'll go through that. But we also established some new pathways and opportunities for training and hiring in 2019. And we are continuing to create and develop these pathways and pipelines as so that they're tailored to hiring managers needs and also uh, the, the skills and abilities of candidates. So when we look at our New Haven hiring initiative uh, strategies, we have five. Actually, just a quick review of the numbers. So, you know, at Yale, 14,000 or so faculty and staff members are uh, you know, working at Yale. And out of that, 5,000 are New Haven residents or over 5,000, which is, you know, almost one third. When we look at our hiring, you know, numbers since July of 2015, we've hired almost 4,000 New Haven residents into regular or full-time positions. And per our agreement with the union, uh, that number looks like 1,400 or 1,409. And that is based on the positions that we agreed to count. Uh, and then from the neighborhoods of Focus, we had almost 1,000, so 964. Uh, residents were hired at that time. And once again, per our agreement, that number is 441. So we are working uh, and focused on getting to and, and, and beyond that 500 number. And that's what our team has been built to do. And we'll, we'll talk more about that this morning. When I mentioned the neighborhoods of Focus, they actually are seven. So there's Dixwell, Dwight, Fairhaven, The Hill, New Hallville, West Rock, and West River. So with our strategy, we have actually five you know, strategic focuses. The first one is recruitment. And of course, that's the, the primary one, where we wanna help build the workforce of the future for Yale, but also uh, contribute to the economic well-being of New Haven. And that's, that's our goal and our commitment. From a retention standpoint, uh, you know, it's one thing to get hired, but we also wanna make sure that people come in and succeed and grow. So when we look at our numbers, uh, about 75% of all New Haven hires that come into the university are still there and still thriving. When we look at the neighborhood of focus numbers, that jumps up to 80%, which is very encouraging. Now data is a very important focus of ours. And you'll hear from Philip a little bit later. He actually is, you know, part of his job is actually to pull together our data, but you know, it helps us to focus our efforts. And you'll hear about that later this morning when we talk about some of our frequently filled jobs that we're targeting. Now, communication, you know, as a focus, you know, is probably one of the most important ones. For years, we've been talking internally at Yale to hiring managers and organizations about the importance of hiring locally. With our new addition of our team back in early 2000. Uh, 20, we're able to expand that effort. So being here today is actually a very important part of achieving that strategy to be able to communicate, you know, with the New Haven community. And then from a shareholder standpoint or stakeholders, you know, we of course have our internal stakeholders, but we're also now focusing very much on our external stakeholders. And that's really wrapped into the work that Fallon is doing. And you'll hear more about that from her. So those are our five key focuses. Now, the hiring process at Yale uh, is a conundrum. It's, it's a challenge sometimes to people. Now, if we were at the Rose Center having breakfast together, I might say, by show of hands, how many people either have worked at Yale or know someone who's uh, working at Yale and has joined Yale maybe 13 years or more? and many hands would go up. And then I would ask, how many of those folks that, that joined Yale or worked there went to 155 Whitney, our former HR building, presented their resume, had a warm handshake, and got a chance to meet a recruiter or hiring manager. Many hands would still stay up. Well, 
you know, I, I wish it was back during those days and that time, but a couple of things have changed. And one thing that changed was we, we got so many more applications for employment since that time. We receive roughly 100,000 applications for employment a year, which is, you know, astounding. It's actually more applications than they receive for Yale College. And with those applications, you know, we had to come up with a way, devise a way to stay organized. And that way is through the system called STARS, the Strategic Talent Management and Recruitment System. And putting it simply, STARS is an electronic folder for us. It actually just holds applications until we're ready to review them. And it's not a system that tells us who to select or if someone has the ability to do something. We actually have about 20 or more recruiters who actually look at all the applications and you know, make those decisions. So it's not a system that keeps people out. It's really just a system that holds things. And we'll share a little bit more about that. So if any of you have gone into STARS before, this is the landing page. The first thing you'll see as an external applicant. And right now you'll see that on the right-hand side, we have over 379 opportunities. And many people have said to us, and we've heard, Yale isn't hiring. You know, it's this whole pandemic and Yale's not hiring. But actually, the truth is we are. And, and we have through the pandemic. Last uh, March, we actually went through uh, something called a hiring pause. Not a freeze, it's a hiring pause. And with that, all positions that were put forth you know, any requisitions for jobs that were put forth had to be reviewed by a committee um, of, of leaders at Yale. And only the critical or essential jobs were posted. So if we had over 300 jobs at that time, that probably went down to about 100 early in the pandemic. But that number actually started to grow as we got through the pandemic and, and started to learn some things. And actually, we actually were able to create some new opportunities uh, you know, in, during the pandemic. There's a site coordinator position, for example, uh, that we didn't have before. What's also important during the pandemic, not only did we have the hiring pause, but we were also able, and, and, and I'm so happy and pleased that the university displayed its nimbleness, we all had to go home, you know, unless you were an essential worker. And we got a chance to go home, work from home, continue our pay and benefits. And if someone was in a job that could not, uh, you know, be, you know, converted to home, they still received their pay. And then also, uh, you know, we redeployed people if there were other jobs. But in essence, no one was affected by the pandemic, you know, by a layoff. And I'm very proud you know, of the university you know, for, for living up to that. So I think a lot of things happened that were very good. So just fast forwarding, during our hiring initiative, when we meet with New Haven residents, either through New Haven Works or through our outreach, we actually help them to understand the hiring process, this new thing. So the first thing that we focus on is the job description. Now, every time when someone goes into STARS and they look for a job, they will come up uh, uh, to a job description and will have these elements. So a position focus. And that's really what the manager writes about the role. And it tells the, the job seeker where it is, who it reports to, some really important uh, details about the job and, and responsibilities. And we tell job seekers, focus on that because that's what the manager is writing. Now, the essential duties is really you know, when we select the title, whether it's a clinical receptionist or admin, we'll press a button and all the essential duties will populate. And it's good information, but it's not really essentially focused on that one job. It's all the jobs in that job family. So that's one thing we focus on. The second part is we focus on the required education and experience, but also on the skills and abilities. So from an education and experience perspective, to work at the university, minimally you need a high school diploma or GED. And if you have that, you'll need a certain number of years of experience. 
to be qualified for that job. Now, if you have an associate's degree, you might need less years of experience and bachelor's degree even less. So just using this example here, for this senior admin assistant, they need six years of related work experience in the same job family, meaning in administrative work and a high school diploma. But if they had an associate's degree, they might need four years of re related work experience. If they had a bachelor's degree, they would need little to no experience. So that's one thing we ask people to focus on. But the second thing, and more importantly, the required skills and abilities. So for every job that we post, we, we'll ask for five things. And these are things that the hiring manager and the recruiter have discussed that are, are essential for that job on day one. So when that person gets into that seat, they have to be able to do these things. And one thing about our skills and abilities and how they're listed, you often see the words demonstrated or proven. So someone, the, the candidate, would need to demonstrate or prove that they have these skills and abilities. And we would see that in their documentation and their resume. And that's so important because if we can't find it in your resume, we won't be able to qualify you for that job. And we've had so many job seekers from New Haven say, I'm qualified for this job. I don't know why you know, I'm being shut out. And I'll give you a quick example. I had a young man from Georgetown uh, University. He's a New Haven uh, resident. And he grew up here. He went to Georgetown. And he was applying for Yale. And he said, you know, every application I put in, I am not qualified. I, I cannot believe that. So I sat down with him and we went through his resume and a couple of the jobs that he was looking at. And most, if not all the jobs, asked for certain technical skills, Microsoft, Word, Excel, et cetera. And when we looked at his resume, he didn't have any of that listed. And I said, well, where are your technical skills? He said, well, everyone has them. So I said, well, our, legally, our recruiters cannot qualify you if we can't find it there. It would be unfair and uneven. So through our work together with the New Haven community and New Haven Works, we're trying to share some of these things with residents so that they understand the process. Now we're gonna have a Q&A section uh, at the end of the presentation today. And you know, I'm just gonna try to get ahead of the question about our background checks. So the university does do background checks, but they will only do that background check at the time of the offer. So the person would have gone through the hiring process, the interview process, and would have been that candidate of choice that the manager had selected, and then we do the background check. And the background check will cover education, uh, last three employers to verify, but local, state, and federal uh, criminal checks, sex offender uh, registry, and then of course online uh, you know, crimes, the database uh, searches. So those are the things that we look for in that process. But one thing, if anything should be flagged or come up in that, we do have a committee at the University of Senior Leaders who review them. So it, the, the answer is not automatically no. The, the committee will review uh, the scenario and you know, they, will, they will then make a, a judgment on it. So as we know, all things happen in life, you know, traffic, tickets, too many, or whatever it might be. Uh, so we ask people to apply, you know, because if you don't apply, you'll, you'll never get into Yale. But apply, let the process work, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get there. So earlier today, I, I mentioned that we're gonna need your help. So here's a list of our frequently filled union jobs, our local 34 jobs. And going back to our, our strategic uh, focus of data, when we look at STARS and we look at the jobs that are posted, these are the ones that come up most frequently in Local 34. So clinical reception, of course, during this pandemic is the number one job that we have. And you know, I'm not sure how many, I'm looking at Philip, but he'll tell me at some point, like how many clinical reception jobs that we have open? I believe it's like 30 or 50 at this point. But what are we looking for there? Someone has experience with electronic medical records. If they have, and for us that's EPIC, but there are other systems. If they have experience in a medical setting, 
heavy call volume, so 50 to 100 calls a day, for example, and customer service skills. If you know people who have those skills or that kind of a background, please ask them to apply to Yale. In our administrative assistant roles, knowing Microsoft Office and those different you know, parts of the package are very important. Uh, having organizational skills and attention to detail in customer service. And that attention to detail shows up in resumes and cover letters, you know, promptness of, you know, getting, you know, the process uh, done. So that is a job that we fill very frequently as well. And research assistant has come up a lot, uh, especially with the pandemic, but it takes organizational skills. It takes some Microsoft, it takes some special skills as well, statistical software skills. And sometimes people use that in school. And last but not least, financial assistance. So Microsoft out Excel is the number one uh, package that you know program someone will use, uh, and having some experience with financial reports and software. We have a system called Workday that we use here. We're not expecting people to have it, but maybe they do from a previous employer or they've used some other financial uh, software. So these are the things that we're looking for in these frequently filled jobs. So if you do know people who have these skills and these types of backgrounds, there are a couple of different ways that they can let us know. And we'll, we'll talk about that this morning of how they can get into the process. Now from our local 35 perspective, so our service and maintenance jobs, uh, there are a couple that, that show up very brightly today. So we have a third cook uh, position, which is uh, a position where you, know, you would be a cook uh, for two or more years at an you know, institutional food service location. You know, so where you work at a full service restaurant and you would have what they call serve safe certification. And that's widely known in the industry. Uh, we also, with the reopening of campus, uh, have our banquet server and casual dining staff positions starting to grow that, that list. And I know Philip uh, is taking the lead on, you know, that search and, and working on that. So prior experience in hospitality or food service is important, you know, whether it be in coffee or food, uh, strong customer service skills, attention to detail are some of the things that we, we look for in that role. And one other job category that we don't talk about a lot, but you know, our team is very focused on, uh, now that we have a big and growing full team, are our m and positions, managerial and professional openings. So we don't have a list of frequently filled ones, but you know, Philip ran uh, a search and found some of our current openings. So in administration, if someone's a program manager or a marketing coordinator, you know, we want them to apply and look at those roles. In research, you know, research associate or lab managers, from a clinical perspective, you know, operations managers or licensed clinical social workers and finance analysts, accountants, you know, those roles come up, you know, are, are currently out there in IT software engineers and programmers. And in hospitality, we have our guest experience managers. So in our uh, dining halls and also in some of our food uh, uh, locations across campus, we do need managers uh, to lead the staff there. So when I talked about the, uh, our focus and our strategy, community outreach is one that's very important. So I'm gonna turn it over to Fallon Thomas uh, because this is her ballpark, this is her, her playground. Hello everyone and good morning. Um, as mentioned in my bio, I am a New Haven native, a graduate of um, James Hill House High School. So shout out to all the academics on the line. I've been employed with the university for six years. I've been in its current role for almost a year and a half. And I became employed through um, New Haven Works. So I'm very close to the process that we speak about today. It was through the encouragement of my order at the time, Jeanette Morrison in Ward 22. I had returned from pursuing my graduate degree at Loyola University, Chicago and I was looking for employment. And my previous experience had been in collegiate administration. So she encouraged me to go to New Haven Works to find employment 
specifically with the university. So during my time here at Yale, I've had a steady progression in employment with opportunities for networking, professional development, and service both internally and external to Yale. So it has, it has been a great opportunity to fulfill my passion of outreach and service as a professional. So to talk about our community outreach efforts, um, we support our recruitment and retention aims of the hiring initiative through our outreach. And through that outreach, we encourage referrals to the university. So here is our approach. Key stakeholders, key partners and events. And our key stakeholders, we have our New Haven orders. We met with the orders and we engaged with them to learn what, what constituent concerns were around employment. We also engage with community organizations like the neighborhood management teams to promote our initiatives and to talk about future collaborations. We work with partners like Elm City Communities and CONCAT to support their workforce development. We have also partnered with the Southern New England Urban League in Greater New Haven to bring future community presentations to these neighborhoods. And we also have key partners in New Haven Promise, which is led by President Patricia Melton. It is our premier collegiate internship partnership. Also, we have New Haven Works, who we will talk about later on in this presentation and to whom I owe my existence at Yale. We also have Echo Perfect 10, which is led by directors Walter and Valida Luckett. It is our high school career exploration partnership, which we look forward to um, bringing on board this summer. Lastly, but not least, our Yale Affinity Groups. There are eight within the university and we partner with them to collaborate on internal and external events and also as a source of employee referrals for local residents. Last, we have our events. Pre-COVID, you may have attended or heard about our programs or presentations within the public libraries. Um, and also you may have visited a table um, at events like the Greater New Haven NAACP Health and Wellness Fair. But during COVID, we had to pivot to virtual presentations, which we have called our community conversations. We reached out to orders to start, this converse, to start these conversations. So why not go back home where it all started? And I reached out to order Jeanette Morrison in Ward 22 and order Stephen Winter in Ward 21. And we held our first successful community conversation with the Dixwell community with almost 100 people on the call. And we did a similar presentation today uh, as we are doing today, but more in depth about the hiring process and the review of applications and how to read and support the job descriptions. I'm looking forward to bringing these conversations to a neighborhood near you. I've reached out and had recent conversations with orders in the, the white neighborhood, orders Taisha Walker Myers, Frank Douglas and Yvette Hamilton, and also orders in New Horville, orders Delphine Clyborne, Brian Wingate, and Stephen Winter. I look forward to setting dates for these presentations and talking further and creating future collaborations. And I'm also excited about the opening of the Q House and look forward to future programming there as well. And it's through that outreach, outreach that our goal is to engage, educate, and encourage community members to apply for jobs here at the university. Next, I'll talk about our career exploration. As I mentioned, our two premier partnerships that focus on both the collegiate and high school experience. We have New Haven Promise, which is a high quality workforce development program that is carried out by incentivizing high school students to excel in their studies and prepare for college, career, and civic success. It is my job to manage the internship experience here at the university where I recruit host departments to provide a world-class summer internship experience. We truly support Promise's mission of two through and back, and we hope to see all of our interns back one day as Yale employees. Also this summer, we are looking to bring on board Echo Perfect 10, which is a training program which prepares high school students and young adults for introduction to workplace culture. It nurtures interest in a variety of employment opportunities. 
and increases self-confidence with the ultimate goal, goal of supporting successful employment placement in the future. So I truly look forward to being able to place high school students in a virtual um, career shadowing experience. And as you can see from this slide here, um, you know, pre-COVID, we had these experiences at the Landman Center um, for New Haven Promise. That was our internship fair, which at times brought up to 200 interns who were looking for internships for the summer, not only with Yale, but with city employers as well. So we look forward to the day when we can host them back on campus, but this just this past um, January, we held a, our first virtual internship fair, which was very successful. Below, we will talk about New Haven Works and I will turn it back to Chris Brown. Thanks so much, Fallon. And I appreciate everything you're doing out in the community. And especially, we look forward to uh, the work in the Q House. Um, you know, once again, this is an opportunity for us to be, I'm gonna say offsite, you know, meaning off the campus, and on site in the community uh, to, to work closely uh, you know, with our partners there. So going back to you know, our partnerships and stakeholders, New Haven Works is one of our key partners. And one of the things that we wanna share about them is, of course, they started in 2013. They have about 4,300 members uh, or, you know, in their program. And they place over 1,500 people, almost 1,600 people into jobs. Currently, they have you know roughly about a thousand active members, and you know people who are you know currently engaged in the process. And to be a member of New Haven Works, you have to be 18. You have to have a high school diploma or a GED. You have to prove that you know, you're a resident of New Haven, and they'll help you with your I-9 process and making sure that's all verified and that you're authorized to work in the U.S. You know, as a, a partner of ours, uh, you know, New Haven Works plays a very important role in what we do. Just quickly, in our hiring priority here at the university, first and foremost, if anyone has been affected by a layoff or anything like that, we look to re-employ people. Our second priority is to provide uh, growth opportunities for internals. So people want to move up, they want to move laterally sometimes. Our third priority is to hire a New Haven resident particularly from New Haven Works. And to do that, we actually created uh, in our own STAR system, a, uh, a candidacy, candidacy type in there, you know, called New Haven Works. And so when we have an opportunity, you know, if internal isn't available or a, one of our layoffs is not interested, then it will jump over the fence to our New Haven Works uh, members. And, they're able to get an earlier look at an opportunity than other external candidates, which is very important. So with that, I say, if you know anyone who's interested in working at Yale, uh, particularly in any of our unionized jobs, I think you know taking a trip to New Haven Works, and they you can take that trip online today. Uh, we'll share some more information, but that's a great way of boosting or, or your candidacy, if you will. Now, uh, our colleague, Philip Relic, knows New Haven Works pretty well. Uh, Philip, you were one of the job coaches there. Correct, thank you, Chris. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you again for joining us uh, today. So I'll just uh, say a little bit more about services that are provided by uh, New Haven Works. As Chris mentioned, I had an opportunity uh, to spend one year there working as a job coach, and uh, as someone who actually experienced the program, I can actually say that it's really a great resource for uh, New Haven residents, and I would highly encourage everyone um, to sign up. So uh, what can you get there? So when you join the program, you will be paired with a job coach. So your job coach will help you with your career planning. You will, they will help you develop your individual career plan. Um, you will share what are your goals, and they will help you achieve your goals. Of course, you will get the help with your resume, cover letter, uh, and assistance with application. Also, you will have the extra pair of eyes that will always uh, inform you about job openings in case you missed it. Uh, so you, they will make sure that you don't miss a bit in your job search. Uh, also, there's mock interview preparation, and then there are a lot of networking and hiring events. For example, once a month, uh, we host a networking event for New Haven Works members. Uh, in those events, they have a chance to meet uh, our partners at staffing and also hiring managers. And a lot of people actually get hired through those events, which is again, great opportunity, uh, particularly for New Haven Works members. 
Um, also, they can uh, offer referrals to temporary opportunities. So as Chris says, once our first priority are, of course, people uh, whose jobs were affected that are laid off. But once we don't manage to fill that uh, vacancy, we will then ask New Haven Works for referrals. So if you're available for temporary opportunities, you definitely should sign up for New Haven Works. Those jobs are not posted externally. Um, so you can just go there and apply. So as a New Haven Works member, your job coach will be able to refer you for those jobs. So I highly recommend joining the program, especially if you're available and open to temporary uh, opportunities. And also another thing that New Haven Works offers is uh, transportation assistance if you need any. If you'd like to learn more about New Haven Works, you can contact uh, Melissa Mason, the executive director. You can see her contact here. And later on, we will actually share more resources and Karen will include uh, contact information in the follow-up email as well. Thank you. Chris, back to you. Thanks, Philip. I much appreciate it. And one thing, folks, we have a couple minutes left. Uh, you may have some questions that are, are, are bubbling up for you. If in the chat, you wouldn't mind sharing those questions with us, uh, we'll try to answer them before we end today. And like I said, we have a few more minutes. So like I said, you know, today's event is really about sharing information, but we're also uh, looking for your help and help with spreading the word about our hiring initiatives. There are different ways to do it. Hopefully many of you receive our uh, New Haven Hiring Initiative newsletter, which we launched uh, you know, in last spring. If you don't, I, I'm sure we're gonna be sharing that with you in our, our subsequent communications, you know, in the chat and in our email. But there's also a button there on the right-hand side of every newsletter. It says, you know, temporary opportunities register here. So that's a great chance to let us know that you're interested in temporary opportunities. And like Philip said, they are not posted in stars. So as you know, we get those opportunities, we look for New Haven Works members or New Haven residents to fill those opportunities. So it's a great chance to get your foot in the door. I believe that, uh, Philip, you, you can tell me the, the stat, but people who start in temporary work at Yale actually, you know, typically step into a role. Is that correct, Philip? That, that is correct. So based on our data, uh, we can tell that over 50% of people that uh, manage to acquire permanent employment, regular employment, I'm talking, of course, only about New Haven residents, over 50% of them at some point were temporary employees at Yale. Sometimes it's a transition directly from temp to perm. There is no any gap between. Sometimes maybe it's someone who worked as a temp two years ago and managed to come back, but it definitely strengthens your candidacy. So if you're interested and available, as Chris said, please uh, subscribe for the newsletter so you can register for uh, those opportunities. Yeah. And one thing about you know clicking that button and, and letting us know, we will contact you if your background matches one of our openings. So you know it won't be automatic like, oh, I signed up and it's going to just happen. You know, your job family or your pursuit, and your background, we have to make sure that it matches the openings that we have. So if it does, we will definitely be reaching out to you. So the other thing we need your help with is we share information about our frequently filled jobs. And uh, just from a statistical standpoint, so 30% of our jobs in STARS right now are clerical and technical. About 10% are, you know, are service jobs, 35, and uh, about 60% are managerial and professional roles. These are the areas that we need you know, people in clinical reception, admin, research, finance, uh, our third cook, banquet service, casual dining, staff, and, and the whole list of MMP roles. So if you do have people in your personal and professional networks, please let them know. Sign, sign up either with New Haven Works or, you know, go directly to STARS and create a profile. Because if you create a profile in STARS, our team will be able to go in there and search. And we do, we search for New Haven residents, we search for people you know, from the neighborhoods of Focus, and we try to connect them to, to, to roles. But we can't do that if you're not in there. So please create that profile. And, and last but not least, signing up with New Haven Works. Like I said before, you know, New Haven Works is you know, a, a resource that is not, maybe when it first started, it was used widely and you know, people got really excited. And as most things happen in life, you know, it starts off like this and it kind of you know, goes like this, it levels off. 
you know, we think it's important to sign up with New Haven Works. They have, uh, you know, once again, an understanding our, of our roles here at the university. They also have other partners as well. You know, the hospital is a partner. All the bio uh, uh, medical, you know, companies are sprouting up in New Haven. They're, they're connecting with them as well. So they're a good partner uh, and a good resource. And once again, where can you go to get a coach for your, uh, your job pursuits? You really can't. And it, it, it's free of cost, so it just makes sense. Like we said before, we have some resources for you, uh, and you know some of these have shown up in the chat. And we'll also have a Karen will send out an email today uh, to say thank you for joining us, but also you know create these links. Uh, we we want to make sure that uh, if you want some help, if you know someone who needs some help with their resume or cover letter. We have in our, on our webpage, you know, Yale your Yale.edu backslash NHHI, uh, we have information about resumes and cover letters there, or you can just click that link right there uh, as well. Uh, and all these, these links will be very helpful to you. And last but not least, you know, if you have a referral, you know, you, you, one of those frequently filled jobs, you know someone and you want to refer them to us, please contact us at uh, New Haven Hiring at yell.edu. If you have a question specifically about our hiring process, you know, and how to navigate it, please send a question there as well. Um, you know, we, we do mind that, uh, that website and we look at it and we try to respond, uh, you know, in a timely manner. So let's take a few questions. You know, we use this as the Q and A section. Uh, so I have a, a comment. I'm starting to see some questions in the chat. There's a comment from Alder Jeanette Morrison. Uh, she said that Dixwell is happy to have served as the first community to partner with this conversation. Correct application completion is the first step. Thank you, Fallon. So thank you, Fallon. Um, and a follow up question: um, what, what will the um, the partnership look like once the Q House is up and running? That's a great question. So, I, Fel, I believe you've been talking to Henry there at, at the Q House, and you know they have different rooms uh, at the Q House, and you know we're thinking about establishing some office hours, if you will, so that we're on site to be able to help people who have questions about the process or would like to have someone look at their resume. Um, you know, one thing about working at Yale and trying to get to Yale, sometimes people work outside of the university and they work in a specific type of job. And then when you look at the listings and stars, you might not find your uh, job title. You know, if you work in insurance, for example, you're, you're doing actuarial work or something like that, you, you won't necessarily find that here. So understanding the transferable skills that you have and how that matches up with our roles is an important thing to do. So meeting with Fallon, meeting with New Haven uh, Works can help someone to figure out where your transferable skills might show up best. Uh, I think having those types of conversations is important. And of course, you know, if you're a young person, you, you know, just getting into the workforce, you know, I, I think we're going to be hosting and talking about workforce readiness, you know, how to, how to get ready to get that first or second job you know, in your career. And Fallon, I don't know if you have any more that you want to offer. Sure. So with our engagements with the orders, you know, that is the first step to entering these neighborhoods. And we hope to identify community spaces where we can then work, do workshops. And like you said, workshops around career readiness, the STARS process, interviewing skills and resume and cover letter writing. So we hope to have programming in the Q House that will cover these items and not only just hearing my voice all the time, but bringing in area employers to speak to those same topics. Uh, another question, um, could you post the link for resume and cover letter information here in the chat? Um, and there are a couple of comments, uh, one from Valida Luckett, uh, she says, thank you for your kind endorsement. We're thrilled to partner with Yale University. That's from Walter and Valida Luckett of Echo Perfect 10. We're looking forward to that program. And a comment, great presentation team. Awesome job as always. I concur. Do you have, um, all waiting for some additional questions. Do you have any 
kind of frequently asked questions that can um, maybe people had they're not thinking of right now, but it's something that usually comes up. Just one. Yeah, I, I think in you know I, I think Fallon embodies this right. You know, sometimes when you're applying to university, you know, you, you take a couple of swings at, at at the bat and you don't get in, and it can be frustrating sometimes. But you know, making sure that you have that persistence and that patience, right? Because that's what it takes. It takes persistence and patience. And the things that we're doing in this hiring initiative. You know, you if you don't have an HR person in your back pocket or that you know that can help guide or direct you or call out certain things, then you're you're left to it on your own, and it's not very easy, you know, to to navigate that process. So we try, like Fallon said, you know, to engage, to educate or enlighten people, and then to encourage them, you know, to to apply, and it may take a couple of at bats, but we truly think that. You know, if you're looking at that uh, job description and reading it well and tailoring your materials towards it, practicing your interviewing skills. And, you know, one thing we've done during this whole pandemic, we were engaging with, you know, our partners at New Haven Work, uh, New Haven residents and going on Zoom. Like we weren't doing this, you know, think about it, last March, no one was doing Zoom really. Right? We were like, what is this thing? Well, we, we would bring people onto Zoom just so that we could, you know, one, show them that they could do it, but then to provide some coaching there, you know, like, because today, what we're doing today is really what interviewing is and probably will be in the future. Like, people will be having more and more Zoom interviews, uh, you know, over time. I, I have to imagine that. So it's good to practice. And that's the thing I would say to people you know, practicing what you're going to say and what's beautiful about Zoom, you know, and, and this whole format, you know, no one knows that your notes are right here. So it's essentially an open book test. You just need to practice, prepare, and then and execute. Thank you for that. A uh, couple more comments. Nasima says, thank you so much for the information. I'm already thinking about changes I can make to my application process. Just wonderful. Lauren says, great job. Uh, there's a question about uh, green jobs. Um, um, how does the New Haven Hiring Initiative focus on the development of green jobs, um, for example, clean energy? I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I think I'm just going to We can share uh, more about Yale 2025 sustainability plan. Uh, we can include that in a follow up. It's actually it outlines Yale's efforts uh, to be more green in short, not only in creating jobs, but also in a way, uh, you know, daily operations. Um, so we'll definitely give, if you just Google Yale 2025 sustainability plan, you can actually read a lot about Yale's efforts um, uh, around that topic. That's why Philip's the perfect person for his job. <laughs> He's always got these facts. So I'll be happy to share that along with all the other links that I'll be sending out. Uh, someone pointed out um, uh, having a, a, a LinkedIn page. Um, Yale University Careers does have a, um, a LinkedIn page. Um, so please follow that. So quick shout out. So once again, having Philip and Fallon on the team, you know, and this happened right before the pandemic, of course. Um, I'm glad they got here before it all happened. Uh, you know, to be able to launch a newsletter, we, we looked at our web page and, and revamped that. We added some of those links to resume and cover letter. So those are some of the things that the team has been working on. And we'll continue to, to, to push that along. Um, you know, from a, a communication standpoint, because, you know, once again, being here today, fantastic. It helps us immensely. It helps your partners, you know, like, let's say, for example, in New Haven Works. So we want to continue to do these things uh, and communicate, you know, with the community. Okay. 
All right, Karen. <laughs> Thank like, you so much. I see a lot of thank yous and presentation was great. So kudos um, to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a great way to end our series. Uh, do you have any final comments you'd like to make before we sign off? Yeah, I, I would just like to say uh, thank you on, on behalf of the team. We hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, we look forward to being with you again. And we hope, you know, we're all back on campus this summer uh, and that we can, when you resume the breakfast, we can I'll be there together. We do miss you. And, you know, Mr. Holmes, hi, how are you? I <laughs> hope you're here. You know, he calls me occasionally. But, uh, you know, this is an important part of, of being at Yale, right? You know, the, the community breakfast and the work that we do. So we, we thank you for the opportunity and we thank you for your partnership. So please, once again, if you know people in those frequently filled jobs, please encourage them to, you know, at least create a profile at Yale, if not apply for it. Similar. Well, I want to join all of the many, many people who are adding thank you, thank you, thank yous uh, in the chat box. Thank you all so much for your time this morning. As I mentioned, I will send out links so that you can follow up um, with some of the uh, some of the items that were shared here, and you can also follow up with specific questions to the Haven Hire Initiative. Um, thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful Mother's Day wonderful Father's Day. Uh, enjoy your summer and we're really looking forward to seeing you again in September. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you Karen. Appreciate it. Thank you, Karen. Have a good day, everyone. All right.